my back, boy. Please don't think it's sweet. I stay with the heat, even though I'm a sad boy. You better watch the way you breathe around me for the breath of your last boy. Hello guys and welcome back to another beautiful day it is your boy and I am back consistently uh, posting, posting, posting the second part of this wonderful series and I hope you all enjoy lay back get some popcorn because it's about to get fun I'm about to try to get into the rhythm of things so this is going to be a pretty long one I uh, hope you all just uh, enjoy it let's go picking off from where we left off last time all right you fucking nerd let's settle this shouts Bakugo Though there was an entire stadium filled with civilians and heroes alike to spectate, Katsuki seemed to not even notice they existed in that moment. Deku agreed and began to get into a fighting stance as he held his hands for a sign. Ooh, Midori has just judged Katsuki, a worthy opponent, or what we see this time. Come on, Midoriya, Katsuki Bakugo, ready, and start. Die. The hothead explodes forward and throws an explosion when a massive wave of rabbits tank this attack and keep generating more and more of themselves. R rabbits says President Mike. The consensus for this new summon is that they're adorable, but more than anything, the amount of them is quite interesting as even though Bakugo keeps blowing them into shadows, more just keep coming out. The quantity creates a dome which traps them both. Bakugo just forces his way through and each rabbit killed results in him getting blinded, however, and they just turn to liquid like they would in the original. While he's blinded, he's grabbed from behind and slammed to the floor. The rabbits suddenly then all burst to liquid shadows, and Deku darts back, avoiding an explosion. Bakugo wipes his face and stands, but he's then struck in the gut by an air force strike, and then another. Nue Orochi. You literally just announced it. Do you think I won't notice them coming at me, you idiot? Deku stays quiet, however, as Bakugo hears something, and he turns quickly, seeing behind him one remaining rabbit that then turns to liquid shadows. From that shadow, a massive wing strikes into his ribs. He's electrocuted and thrown into the sky, and Nui chases after, allowing Orochi to grab his leg before he's then thrown down to be struck in the stomach by a kick. Bakugo rolls along the stage and stops himself by an explosion, barely, before taking a new stance. I need time to get over the electricity. I'll keep that nerd at bay for now. While stationary, he fires shot after shot at Nui, who is forced to stay at bay since it's too big and though it can fly, a wing being hit will still hinder it. Noticing this, Deku puts it away and is riddled with AP shots himself, and right as he's about to be falling backwards, Katsuki drops from the sky but the howitzer impact, causing a massive quake that begins to critically damage the stage itself. While in, while in anticipation, everyone is trying to see past the smoke though. They start to hear the impact of skin against skin, however. They soon see the two were going barehanded with hand-to-hand -hand combat, and their movements were quite masterful, with Deku using Wing Chun while Koski is using wrestling moves. He manages to grab Deku's leg and trip him to the floor before throwing down an explosion, but his hand is knocked away as he's palm struck in the chest. Gum. From his shadow, black whips lash forward, grabbing Bakugo, and Deku holds his foot at his stomach before pushing him off and having the whips throw him towards the grass. And before he can even fire an explosion to stop himself, Nui comes back in and strikes him up front with its electrified wings which tases him effectively and locks his muscles in place, and he lands on the grass twitching and unable to even use his quirk. Ugh, damn it! And Izuku Midoriya takes the win! As he raises his hand in victory, the festival comes to an end with this one match. At the very least, Katsuki finally got to release all his strength and he still can't beat Deku, so it's fair to say he has to take a different front from now on. The medal ceremony is given afterwards and finally everything is coming to an end. 1A Homeroom Aizawa says, go home and sleep, do not do anything stupid, says you, shouts Katsuki, it's my job to be busy. You all did good today, take pride in that, all of you. One day isn't to be pushed around, that's what you proved. Aw, Sensei, you're being sentimental. Never tell anyone. Now go home. You don't have to come in tomorrow. As he walks out, the class would bid him farewell, he does the same. Everyone begins to exit, completely relieved it has all ended. In the following days, for a few of them, like Todoroki, 
a few things changed. The same goes for Uraka and Katsuki. The kids had also gained notoriety and had been recognized when they went out at times. This continues when Midori is taking the train to school and it's uncomfortable, extremely so. When he arrives at school, Midori meets Ida but something about him is off. For now he doesn't pry and they enter class. Man, some great schoolers told me I made a good effort, says Sero. Kind of a bummer. Same here, says Kirishima. Well, not just great schoolers, but yeah. While they're talking, in walks Aizawa and everyone quiets instantly. Good morning. Good to see you back on your feet, Sensei. Thank Midoriya. What what happened? asked Mineta. I can heal people. You can heal people? I can heal people. I'm sort of on a small internship with Recovery Girl. Sometimes I'll be called to her office to handle her students and so on, which might include some of you. It feels like every day your quirk gets new tricks, says to you. Forget that for a moment, says Aizawa. We have something important today. You need to pick your hero names. As all their eyes twinkle with excitement, they all start throwing out names and Aizawa ends up getting pissed. So he brings Midnight in and they all get to go up one at a time lest they want to incur Aizawa's wrath. Later that day, when Midoriya is leaving, along the hall he's met by All Might. Oh, hi. Hello, young Midoriya. You're shaking. That I am. Can we talk? You already are. You uh, have a lot of nominations, I know, but the one who trained me um, helped me train one for all. He gave me a call. He wants to train you. Oh, that's a problem? No, no, but he's strict. God, he's strict. What the hell did he do to you, he thinks. Midoriya ends up choosing Gran Torino, and everyone splits up at the local train station. At this point, everyone had heard of the news about the tragic end of Ingenium, but only Uraka and Deku were aware of his connection to Ida, and yet they couldn't say much before they split. I should have pressed them more. He's going to Hosu. I should try to get there. Just then, having arrived at Gran Torino's home, while in his thoughts, he finds it disheveled in more ways than one. Deku's a bit skeptical, but knocks. The door opens on its own, however, and he steps in. His worry quickly is proven right when he sees someone in a pool of blood. Quickly running into the old man, he turns them over, and the man says, Toshinori? <sighs> You're alive. Ketchup. This is ketchup. Are you okay, sir? As he helps him stand, Gran Torino asks who he is, and he says he's Izuku Midoriya from UA. Who? Izuku Midoriya, sir. What? Who? Toshinori. I'm not all might. Do I look blunt? I should call an ambulance. Aside from old age, I think he just suffered a concussion. The moment he turns, however, Gran Torino's demeanor changes as he checks Deku's suitcase and opens it. Mmm, practical. Show me one for all. Deku notices the change in his tones and turns. What did you just say? I'd like to see how much of you can control. Got a problem with that? Sure thing. As he lets the power flow through his body, lightning sparks off of him. The pressure alone knocks Gran Torino into a wall, and the worried Deku is about to move when Gran Torino catches himself. Ooh, I figured you'd have a big output considering how you were moving at the festival. Y yeah you're a really good actor. How much? 60%, but it's more complicated than that. What's that supposed to mean? Moments later, after having suited up, Deku sat down and told Gran Torino about how each user of One For All has been influenced by Shikigami. He also explains how cursed energy works individually and how that influenced uh, One For All itself. Your quirk influenced One For All. That ain't normal. Why not? One For All is a torch that's been passed down and continues to grow like a nuke you need to take control of. You've seen Toshinori's punches, right? Well, it's all about brain chemistry and consciousness, or I guess what you call the soul. Cursed energy is as spiritual as much as it is emotional. The soul. Cursed energy constructs a space called my innate domain. That's where one for all resides right now. An innate domain is a construction of my very being and technique. It reflects me, my soul. You keep saying technique. If I'm being honest, I don't consider the Ten Shadows a quirk, biologically or scientifically. 
no quirk is this complex and if I didn't get signals I would have been stuck trying to figure out the basics must have been tough well it makes no difference to me regardless I still get to rough you up cool don't you get unnerved ever in the following four days, Midoriya and Gran Torino go out and face one another and allows Midoriya to connect even more to One For All and actually speak to Banjo eventually. Now currently they're in the fifth train car heading for Hosu and we are inside Izuku's mind. You're fundamentally transforming One For All. Though Midoriya seemed to be meditating alongside Gran Torino who was just straight up sleeping. He got knocked out when Banjo reached out to him and the young man meets the user in his mind palace or again in a domain. Where is everyone else? He asks. They're busy. Listen to me. This has never happened before. Alright, so I'm sticking to what you told Gran Torino. Your core came normal. We're all changing. I mean, look at me. I didn't always look like this, you know? So expect some changes what you're saying. Oh yes. Take care of yourself, kiddo. We'll do the same on this side. Deku then comes to and sighs, realizing that he may have picked up more than he bargained for. His thoughts are disrupted, however, as a massive crash occurs in the car he was in, and he shields as many civilians as he can quickly with his bare body. Gran Torino had already woken up and found that a hero was on the floor, and with him, a Nomu came through snarling at everyone, when Gran Torino then kicks it in the face and falls out with it. Come after me when the car stops. Deku quickly runs to the fallen hero, pulls him in while telling everyone to calm down. When the train eventually stops, the conductor runs in to check on them, but he sees a kid in a costume. Are, are you a- I'm an intern, but I can do something about the hero. As he holds his hand forward, he summons and calls upon the power of Madoka Deer. As shimmering, massive horns erupt from the sides of his head, he holds his hands on his chest and heals him in seconds. Who else needs healing? Please, my son. Deku turns to a father and- uh, his wife and his son and walks to them holding his hand over his broken arm and refusing it back together leaving no scars in seconds if that's all i need to move out sir i already called the police so hang on you'll be okay all of you he then jumps out through a hole well the hole that the normal made and kicks the air leaping into the air while propelling himself with more and more kicks when high enough to overtake uh, skyscrapers, he saw flames, a city on fire, and of course flew for as quick as possible. When he arrived, he lands on a lamppost and takes in the chaos, the nomus, the carnage, and running civilians evacuating, and he sees a hero being towered over by a nomu alike to the one he faced. He moved quickly, appearing atop the shoulders of the creature, and using a knife hand would pierce into its brain as it screams surprising the heroes as it stumbles backwards and thuds. Deku lands safely and runs to the hero, healing her quickly. He, he took it out in one hit? It's not regenerating? Deku then helps the hero stand and loses the antlers as he makes another sign. Max Elephant. From behind him, his massive Shikigami towers over everyone, looking more ferocious than it would have, and its trunk begins to fill with water, which it spews into the air and sprinkles onto the fire. This alerts the flying nomus to it, but one who heads for the elephant is burnt by the flames of Endeavor as he approaches Deku, but stops upon seeing Gran Torino meet back up with him. But he gets noticed by Deku anyway. He is, after all, the number one, I mean the number two hero. But he gets noticed by Deku anyway, and of course the other heroes, because he is, after all, number two in Japan. Gran Torino, my friend, he's here. Um, can I go look for him? Why? Because I have a feeling he's about to do something really stupid. Well, can you keep the elephant here? Yeah, being away doesn't change its autonomy. So, go on then. Thank you. Knew it. Wings explode from his back and take him to the sky, just as Max Elephant fires another sprinkle of water, and the heroes begin to finally retake a bit of control. I assume you're not joining the fray, asked Shigaraki. We see him step out of a police station, now laid bathed in flames while chaos ensues around him. He looked forward and saw Dobby. They sent me to pick you up. Uh, that little shit, he's gonna pay. Speaking of that little shit, 
who can't help but dip his nose where it doesn't belong, he intercepts his class president in some trouble and drops in an alley, stopping Stain's swing at Ida's leg. Why did he? The moment Stain turns back, he barely blocks the massive fangs of Orochi as they dig into and through his armor until he's concussed into a wall, leaving his eyes blank. The serpent dies back into its shadow and disappears while Deku runs to Native and puts the antlers back on, starting to heal him. Ida, Ida, are you alright? Midoriya, why are you here? This doesn't concern you. Deku then moves on to him and heals the previous wounds dealt to him. Just then, Stain would sluggishly get back on his feet, cracking his bones. A friend showing up just in the nick of time to save you. Unfortunately, this isn't a fairy tale. The weaker one of us will get cold, and it ain't gonna be me. Deku looks at him blankly, and with a sigh, he stands. I'm assuming you didn't watch the festival. You're overestimating yourself, bastard. Nui rises from his shadow, grabbing Ida a native, while Orochi rises once again and expels an ember-like mist from its mouth. Orochi was gifted the smokescreen meta ability, which not only blinds, but also poisons its enemies now. The snake can use the smokescreen with poison or without by mix, uh, mixing its own venom in it, but it will not affect Deku or anyone else, honestly, as long as they take the right precautions. But for now, it will affect anyone if, like, they're in proximity except for Deku, so he doesn't use it often with poison. Stan quickly notices this mist is dangerous and is about to jump when he feels his legs go numb. He falls to his knees and is then grabbed by the arm and struck in the stomach, gagging and knocking the wind out of him as he passes out. There you go, you fucking psychopath. The mist quickly dissipates when Orochi does, and Deku steps out holding the villain when Todoroki nearly bumps into him as he exits the alley. Oh, Midoriya, is that? Yes, yes it is. You never cease to impress. Nui then descends with Ida and Native, safely. While well, Native thanks Deku though, Ida is not happy and walks down Deku, asking him to give him the chance to give the final blow. No. Midoriya! I can heal him. As Ida is left speechless, he begins to shiver with a deep rage, even deeper than earlier. Are you really gonna go that far just to make me stop? Don't give me hope, Midoriya. I don't know what it'll do to me. I don't joke, you know that. A broken spine is no issue for my new Shikigami. I recently healed someone with their arm having snapped in two. It makes you think, doesn't it, Ida? That you would have stooped that low even though I was right here. Why didn't you tell us? I, I did. I, I don't. My, he snapped his spine. And he did it like it was necessary. Why? Why do I always have to take the high road while he gets to destroy my family? Because tonight you'll go home with your brother being as good as new, and he'll be in a jail cell. You win, Ida. Remember that. You win because you didn't do it. Because you didn't take revenge. Sometimes I wonder how he says things like that so effortlessly. Thanks to Roki. This very intimate moment is then interrupted when Gran Torino and other heroes arrive. When they see the hero killer being held by Deku, the young hero suddenly shushes them. Not a word to anyone. Are you seriously a kid? That was so shady. Deku then inquires about the fires being put out and they say his elephant really came in handy and the fire is out, but it just turned to shadows after. That's fine, return to me. Just wanted to make sure everything was okay. Putting down Stain, Deku then summons Gamma, who swallows him up while wrapping him up in Black Whip and shutting its mouth closed, when suddenly, Gran Torino tells them to watch out as another flying Nomu glides down about to grab Deku, who grabs his legs and pushes aside the others uh, it was aiming to grab. K kid what are you doing? I need space. As he revs up Cursed Energy, he strengthens his grip and spins, throwing the Nomu onto the sidewalk. Easy does it. As he lands, he dusts himself off while everyone wonders if this kid is really a kid because the way he reacts to everything is so goddamn calculated. Stain did not resurface that day, and Deku did, and he said that he would heal Ida, Ida's brother. I mean, technically, they're all sharing the name of Ida. You get the point. He heals Tensei. 
It was actually so instantaneous that Ida almost couldn't believe it. But having Tensei back is clearly more important. And though they were almost reprimanded, everything ended up working out. But obviously no one was going to tell anybody what actually happened. They can't tell their friends or family either. <sighs> well, he thinks before he acts unlike you, so I say he's a good successor. Over the phone, Grand Turiner tells All Might of what happened, so he assumes that means Toshinori has been healed as well. Indeed I have, but the embers of one for all are still wasting away. That child, I feel like I asked too much. It was the same for you, Toshinori. Think about what he wants. Also, yes, he's... That kid's a bit crazy in the head. Seriously, master? Grand Dorino says he's not joking because Deku told him so himself. He told me he had a pro a propensity for danger like it was hardwired into him. He's a good kid, but look out for him. He's talented. But when that goes unchecked, we create victims. A few hours later, Deku walks out of Grand Torino's home and the old man comes out with him. Alright, don't get into any kerfuffles. Kerfuffle. Don't get smart with me. You still have a long way to go, got it? It's a miracle you haven't broken the bone or something at least once. Who says I haven't? I healed with reverse curse technique. He then dodges the strike of his cane at his ankle. You missed. Be more careful. Oh, I take it back. You really are like him. Like, all might. Go home, kid, and take care of yourself. Just some advice from a decrepit old man. Thank you. For everything. The next day, the boys are up in a holler about Koski's terrible haircut, which he cannot seem to return to normal. But Ida, Deku, and Todoroki seem to have gotten closer and are just casually talking. But like everyone, they're talking about their internships. Eventually, All Might arrives and it's time to go to Ground Gamma. There, All Might devises a trial to see their new gained experience or lack thereof and their increase in control of their quirks. From the stage, everyone watches on the screen as they bet on who they think are going to win. I'm betting on Midoriya, Ribbit. I mean, Midoriya is the fastest in our class, but this environment is against him, says Momo. Alright, young embryo, shouts All Might. When I give the signal, you just run for the hills. Well, the pipes. Haha. <laughs> Classic All Might. Nice. Alright. Ready? Go. One for all. Full cowling. 40%. Darting towards All Might, Deku grabs onto a pipe and swings back into the sky far ahead of everyone else, taking them all by surprise as this swift type of movement has never usually been his way of, well, moving. As he begins to descend, Deku already picks out a path and lands, darting from pipe to pipe as he takes inspiration from Gran Torino's movements. No wasted steps or movements, nothing flashily, um, nothing flashily done and strictly direct movements, but useful ones. This allows him to reach All Might and land beside him first. Damn, Midoriya, good moves. The others carry on trying to reach for All Might who puts a thumbs up to Deku. He returns it, and then he stands, saying, I learned a few things. Midoriya, after this, come meet me in the lounge. We need to talk about one for all and all for one. Deku is surprised to hear about the term all for one, but considering how ominous it sounds, this must be serious, and indeed it is as he learns about the history of the quirk he has. As it was passed down and it was battled for... And it gave birth to another type of power, which is also like, you know, constantly passing on in a way for all for one. It's just him like holding it for generations. But this only strengthens Midoriya's resolve and he's going to need it because there is a summer training camp about to happen. To attend it at all, you need to pass your midterms, though. So leave it to the idiots of 1A to screw that up even after weeks pass and they have all that time to study. I didn't study for shit. Language Kaminari. Well, Mina blissfully just laughs because she's not any better. She's just not going to even announce it because she knows she's dumb. Like, Mineta, right? While they're doing that, Mineta is ranked ninth in their class, which really goes to speak to their intelligence, dog. Like, how? 
Anyway, if you need help with studying, I believe that could be of assistance, Momo says. No luck for the practical part, though. As she gets in the slump, Midori says not to worry about it, as they don't know what the test will actually entail for them. Don't be so hard on yourself. Toroki says, sometimes I wonder if you actually attend class. Hey, words hurt, man. They really hurt. While they talk, time passes like clockwork, and they have to go to lunch and come back, have their last class of the day, and begin to start getting ready to leave. All while doing that, they're still racking their brains about what the practical exams could entail. Whatever the hell it is you're all worrying about can just be dealt with explosions, you morons. Who are you calling a moron? You don't even know how to dial back your own quirk. And you. Me. You. Stop always asking, damn it. Yes, you, says Bakugo. It's always you. So you learn some new tricks, huh? So did you, but you don't see me complaining. The atmosphere quickly becomes tense already as Bakugo seems ready to explode. And he declares that this gap between them... I'm not gonna let it widen more than it already has. Same goes for you, Icy Hot. So he did come up with it, thanks to Roki. He leaves, slamming the door closed behind, and everyone silences. Now let's segue to an inspirational montage as everyone tries to study and train for the midterms, all culminating in the eventual day it actually takes place. After taking the written portion, snooze fest, but after that, they dress up, get ready for the practical part. This is one little thing though uh sure are a lot of teachers here zero remarks knowing you guys there's a chance you asked around and already have an idea of what's going on aizawa says oh yay so it's just gonna be robots and all that stuff all over again as nezu reveals himself from inside aizawa's scarf he says no as they will actually have the kids face the teachers and the lots have already been drawn by this point the kids are already kind of on edge First, Todoroki and Yarozu will be facing me, says Aizawa. As for my two troublemakers, he looks to Deku and Bakugo, but stops with his next words and points behind them. The look on their classmates show horror as the two return and see All Might. Those two together? Oh my god, this is such a train wreck. All of it. Moments later, after everyone had been driven to their individual sites, we follow Deku and Bakugo as they walk together in silence. Surprisingly enough though, Bakugo is the first one to break it. One time. The only time I'm ever going to work with you again, nerd. The feeling is mutual. Don't fuck this up. I'll fuck you up if you don't shut it. A massive gust of wind then hits them from behind just then, and calmly they turn around, seeing all my step into town. The aura about him is completely different. Don't you dare take this lightly, young embryos. Currently I am a villain. So let your guard down and you will suffer. Bakugo gets in front of Deku and fires a stun grenade when All Might is close enough. And yet the hero doesn't even blink, worrying Bakugo who shouts, Hurry the hell up! Kangu. Suddenly All Might is rammed into by the piercing ox as he grabs onto its horns, but it suddenly grows bigger and All Might loses footing. I'm floating. The ox then rams him into the right and he regains his way as he's pushed all the way back to the gate. However, All Might manages to escape to the skies and kicks, crashing down towards Deku, who meets his blow with a kick, reverberating a shockwave which sends Bakugo flying. He catches himself, however, and lands on a building. Don't leave me out! He blasts back forward, spinning and building up a howitzer impact into All Might's side, but he literally backhands and dissipates his attack and goes to kick at him when his foot is caught by a black whip, which releases from Deku's shadow. Many more are released and grab a hold of him. Bakugo lands and moves in along with Deku who begins to let off Nui's electric discharge. Fajin. As both strike, the number one hero is thrown into a building, actually sustaining some damage. But it's not just that. While he's smashing through buildings, Deku and Bakugo begin to run to escape. Midori was close enough to Bakugo to understand that he would never let himself be helped out to get out of any situation, so he didn't help him. But that's the worst thing he could have done, as they're suddenly hit by a massive blast of air, slamming them into one another. My Air Force Blast. All Might charges at them, shouting, I've picked up a few tricks, young Midoriya. Bakugo pushes aside Deku, regaining balance by using the explosions, while Deku crashes to the ground, only to have Bakugo thrown his way, and have All Might following up right after, aiming to stomp them. Gotcha. Moving in a blink, though, the piercing ox bashes into All Might and sends him flying out of the very area they were meant to be fighting in. 
Deku didn't just unsummon the ox when its job was done. He had to run around and build up power until it returned. Now run. Shut up. Together, they run and run and make it out as their win is, well, solidified to their classmates. Seriously, those two? Now we can't fall behind. Stop shivering, Mineta. Shut up. I can't help it. <sighs> oh, you shit, Deku. You're acting like I care. With well, the scoff, Koski marches off to watch the other fights, and Deku follows as they're already back to not agreeing with one another, uh, one another in any way. Like, they're just going to be like that for a bit. All Might eventually comes back, of course. Definitely a bit bruised as well, but a few days of rest will take care of that. Now, of course, not everyone passes the test, but they're going to be allowed to go to training camp anyway. Another amazing ruse devised by Aizawa to make them try harder. Alright, so we'll skip over them shopping because there's no incident. Lord knows that if the current Shigaraki tries anything against Deku, he is mincemeat, and even he is not that naive or stupid. First day of training camp. 1B and 1A gather outside, preparing to board their buses and are putting their luggage in currently, but Monoma heard something interesting. Oh, 1A had failures in their midterms, huh? I mean, everyone knows you guys are superior, but wow. Monoma, chill out, man. Yeah, you're being scary. Tokage says, any ill will he has isn't coming from us. We really don't hold a grudge over the festival. That's fine. I don't remember you guys. I'm not mad, Deku says. Smacking him on the head, Ida says that's inconsiderate. Say that again, you ingrate, shouts Monoma. By now, we know that's just how he talks, Kendo remarks, right? It's a very troubling habit, Momo says. I'm just stating facts, thinks Deku. Fine. They eventually board, however, and all head for the summer camp location. It takes about 30 minutes, but along the way, a pit stop occurs. As they deboard, one beast bus passes theirs. They don't pay much attention to it. Whew, damn, it's been long. Where are we even going? Mineta would rush off to take a piss in private, meanwhile, but Sarah was the one to point out that first off, there is a bathroom in the bus, and one beast bus passed them. Of course, we stopped here for a reason, said Aizawa. I just told you to get off. Never said it was a pit stop. Hey, Eraser, looking gloomy as usual. 1A finally noticed that there was another car, well, another vehicle parked nearby, nearby the cliff, and from it exit two individuals. Very well known, in fact. They were Mandalay and Pixie of the Wow Wow Pussycats, but also for some reason, a little boy is with them. Hey, kids, so uh, our little place is all the way over there by the mountain, says Mandalay. Uh, yeah, guys, let's get back on the bus. I got a bad feeling about this. As they slowly begin to retreat, the next words Mandalay says under her breath makes them panic and they start running for the bus while Deku just stands there sighing. Every time of them, they can just be straight up with us. The very ground beneath them upheels and throws them towards the forest below as they crash into it. Mandalay is then sure to tell them that they have three hours to reach the camp on foot. Oh, and watch out for the beasts. <laughs> oh, beast, what does that mean? There's sand everywhere. I I think they mean that, says Mineta. As they look forward, they see an eldritch nightmare of a creature. Koda is the first to approach and try to tell it to calm down, but it tries to attack him. Why, why isn't it listening? Past them run four of the most troubled in their class, however, each firing devastating attacks, which blow the beast to smithereens. Get your goddamn head in the game, damn it! It's made of sand. The hell? Sand? As he lands, Deku slides into his shadow and slides out under another approaching beast and holds his hand towards its stomach right as it is torn open by a blast of high pressure water. The others rush into battle as well, using all they have to keep fighting and fighting. One hour and 30 minutes later. 1A runs out of the woods, catching their breath and meeting the surprised teachers. Even Aizawa's surprised. But, but you were covered in bruises, says Pixie. And am I losing it or is that a shining deer? Madoka deer exits last, letting out a cry which pulses positive cursed energy. The teachers quickly realize something is off as Deku says Madoka deer doesn't just heal. The technique that powers my core can be reversed to heal, but that can also mean when concentrated enough, it can notify and cut out the recession between your body and the quirk factor and any result of a quirk. That that just makes no sense, says Mandalay. Yes, it does. You're just not listening well. 
disregarding this, <laughs> the teachers just tell them to get their luggage put where it's supposed to be and then come eat dinner. They eat like hogs, not willing to share anything, but that's not all. After this, they also get a hot spring. Oh, you bastard, wash yourself before you step in, damn it. Oh, relax and jump in, Bakugo, says Kaminari. Filthy animal. Hey, too far. Deku, Tokoyami, and Todoroki, meanwhile, just melt into the nice warm water with silence while letting go of all their worries. Some aren't as content with peace, however, as Mineta stares at the wall, keeping the girls at bay. I'm gonna climb it. Mineta, just chill before you get jumped. Yeah, or worse, we get roped in with you, says Ida. Whatever it is you plan, I highly advise against it. All have right to privacy. Mineta just gives the president a nice long stare and disregards any words as he begins to scale the wall like a madman. Gum. A tongue lashes and grabs a hold of Mineta, ripping him off the wall as he crashes into the water and finds himself staring at the intimidating toad who says, Stay. All the boys erupt into laughter as the toad disappears and Mineta blames Deku for ruining his fun. I just saved your life. You're welcome. Damn it, Midoriya! Koda watches them from above, scoffing. Heroes my ass. That guy is just a perv, first of all. And all of them. Fakes. Next day. What in the hell is this? It's the training camp from hell. 1B looks upon the training of 1A. And as they destroy their bodies, their very quirks by overusing them, they're kind of just shocked because this looks like torture. For everyone, it's pretty simple, but it's different for Deku, who has the capacity to destroy a mountain with a punch, but also has sophisticated abilities like the Ten Shadows. The only way that Aizawa found to train his powers was by overstimulating his brain. But how can he do that to a strong yet sensitive organ by over-releasing cursed energy? Deku screams to the sky as he pulses with what seems like endless cursed energy while he's supervised by his tiger. Come on, you can do it, says the tiger. <laughs> his range of expulsion grows even further as he finds himself starting to experience lightheadedness and he falls to his knees. Ah, uh, that was one minute. Heal, Midoriya. Oh, Madoka dear. As he summons the deer, it rises and heals his prefrontal cortex specifically as Midori has been told that that's the main part of uh, where his powers come from. The bleeding he was experiencing from his nose stops as he wipes it off. I'm ready. Well, don't let me stop you. But I want to do something different. It's a bit experimental though. Can you, uh... As he gestures, Tiger backs away as does Aizawa and Deku kneels down to one knee and holds his fingers together, crossing them. Ryoiki Tenkai. His shadow floods around him to a radius of 10 meters and stops before growing again. In the world of One for All, all vestiges see the shrine around them descending, and in the real world, that shrine rises and turns to mush on the floor, sprouting blood red but beautiful flowers. He, he can't normally do that, right? Asked Tetsu Tetsu. Those who can kind of stop to even be able to notice Midoriya was no, uh, doing this, well, were kind of shocked. Kango Anyete. Azawa approaches the tiger and asks if he knew he could do this. Absolutely no idea. Izuku, you okay? Absolutely not. I have the worst migraine ever. Uh. Losing control, he falls on all fours as the shadows retract to the confines of his silhouette and he's left breathing heavily as Madoka Deer runs up and heals him again. But this time, it's much harder for it, considering all the cursed energy, well, that Deku just expelled. We then go to the Vestige world. Did you guys feel that? We, we had bodies for a moment, says Nana. It shouldn't be possible. Shigaraki says it isn't. This new successor of ours isn't going to stop surprising us. For the next four days, Deku kept resurfacing his domain and the more he did it, the more the vestiges helped them because they became part of the expansion into the real world. So this actually leads to him realizing when he's not trying to manifest a concept that is the fucking soul and identity as well as all the others who shouldn't be alive, well, he can do this. I have no idea of its capabilities or how long it'll last. What I know is it's defensive. 
gathered at the borders of a transparent barrier, 1A and 1B, and all the teachers are introduced to what Deku calls a veil. Because though it is there, it cannot be seen, but like he said, can protect them. I said two rules. One, anyone who isn't a member of UA faculty or the academy or connected cannot enter. And two, the farther I am, the stronger it is. I set the radius of difference at 100 meters. Once I go past that, the bear gets exponentially stronger. You're welcome. He then turns and starts to walk off while Monoma fumes, but others just start touching and going in and out of the barrier, finding it cool. Aizawa, however, catches up to Midoriya, and he says they need to talk. This is big. I know. Your humility has certainly come a long way. We both know I'm not showing off. I can make maximum of three barriers. Does the application drain you? None of them drain me significantly at all, but I don't have full control of them, so that's why I'm limiting it. What were you thinking? I'm thinking things just got a little bit easier. For the remaining days, Deku actually makes no attempts to follow Kota because he honestly doesn't care. It's not like he's, he's not like worried, but also he just, he doesn't give a fuck. Like the kid wants to do what he wants to do. Let him do what he want to do. He's not like that. He's not like the original counterpart, but he will save him. He just don't give a fuck right now. The rest of the days are just rest, train, rest, train. And um, eventually things got turned to shit for some people. Uh, help, no, no, I don't want to go in there. As Aizawa drags away those who failed the written portion of the midterms, they beg to be let go and have fun. You should just try studying harder, so stop tugging. Our class dynamic is so bizarre, Aizawa says. At this point, that's the only comforting thing you can say about 1A, says Deku. Sorry, you guys, you have to wait, but we'll be back quick, says Uraraka. While she says this, though, she particularly looks at Midoriya, who simply puts a thumbs up. Other groups begin to enter the forest to do the, you know, test of courage, and though they were still within the barrier, they eventually pass it, and um, it gave the test of courage an even bigger feeling of dread, because in this version, they're literally stepping out of the confines of safety, so now they really know shit's about to get serious. But also in this version of events, Ragdoll stays within the confines of the barrier, as she can still detect everyone she needs to from a safe dif distance for herself, just in case. After all, the barrier is halfway into the forest, so she can still see everything in the forest while still being safe herself and then looking out for everyone else. Now, when she's scoping things out, she actually notices something bizarre, an unknown presence which approaches and approaches until a flying Nomu crashes right outside the barrier against the veil. It gets up snarling in confusion, trying to charge forward, but it's being kept at bay. Pixie, you copy? As she gets on the radio, Pixie says, Yeah, I know. I see them too. Hey guys, is that a forest fire? As those waiting look through the barrier and see the flames, Deku starts to realize something. Shit. And I'll be ending this here. Now, obviously, I solved the problem of the mic. I had to use the Logitech hub for it, but... Yeah, I sound great right now, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I can finally use my vocal range. Ah! But uh, yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And a uh, third part coming up soon. I got y'all. I told y'all, like, the only reason I ain't posted is because of my mic. I'm about to go crazy for real. Just just watch. Just watch. It's been a long time coming, dog. I'm about to get in my bag. All right. See y'all next time. Peace. Stay safe. I'm gone. Hey kid, don't ever let them get inside your head They'll tell you what to do in life instead Of everything you know that you could get Don't let them guide your life towards regret I'll fight for what I love with every breath My past is filled with things I won't forget